everyone and welcome back to between realities how the hell are you we are so excited to have you here with us on this amazing beautiful friday my name is alex vr i am joined here by my co-host skiva skiva how the hell are you doing my i'm goodness. good dude i'm good i have a little bit of a cold so uh you know don't mind me if i sound a little off you know, i feel like uh, or whatever. you know i feel like people sometimes uh, are perceived as like sexier when they have the, the the voice the sick voice oh, you know yeah i was <laughs> yeah. You like that everyone sexy but, now <laughs> everyone but you apparently <laughs> uh hello everyone thanks for joining us here on this live broadcast today uh lissa vr the first in our comments section this morning she like just the, just like goes straight to our chat in the morning like wakes up yeah says hi gets that first comment in i'm gonna put like an hour threshold on it from now on right, <laughs> so, so <laughs> thanks but thanks for being first we love you dearly <laughs> vr central is in the house what's up dude uh german rifter is here Quick Silva, one of our amazing Patreons is here. Uh, Jim Rifter also been a Patreon for Between Realities. Yen is here. What's up, Yen? Good to yeah. see you, dude. Speaking of the Patreon, uh, if you know, we do have a Patreon. We do want to give a shout out to Aspen Darkfire, uh, to Lissa VR, to Cody, and to Jonathan Zug for being our VIP Patreons. But thank you all. Thank you all so much. We love you guys. Yes, dude. and please subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. We got some good stuff going on. We got a lot going on. We're mm -hmm. trying to grow this community, and we're so excited that you guys are all a part of it. Um, thank you so much for being here. Danny Hunkley's here, of course, one of the OG fans of Between Stop Realities. Danny. Robin from Robin's Reality Robin. in the house. Smashed Reality is in the house. Heck yeah. Obscure Nerd VR is here, dude. Obscure Nerd, by the way, has just entered a uh, official. I don't know, like. Uh, plea or you know attempt or whatever he's going to try to break the guinness book of world records record for most consecutive hours of the vr headset on i'm looking forward to that man this is his <laughs> second attempt too right his second attempt the first time he, he he drank a bunch and passed out so so you That's got this though this time dude only energy drinks well thank you guys for being <laughs> here and being a part of uh the between realities family and uh you know and team vr in general it's kind of uh the way i decided to approach today's episode because it really is all about about the team effort, right? Like I really do mm -hmm. feel like all of us in the VR community are working together to make this thing happen, you know? And and it and you, you can't do it by yourself, folks. Like you think you have, you know, I mean, sure, maybe there's a one man show out there here and there, but for the most most part, multiple heads, dude. Like pull mm -hmm. your heads together and it's amazing what can happen when people work together. Yep. Um, so I kind of wanted to touch on, uh, you know, and kind of like have that be the theme of today's episode as we uh, introduce our guest, because this is a guy who helps make a lot in VR happen. Uh, you may know his brother Nathy. He's a fucking mega influencer in the VR world, and he's actually the brand manager for Nathy. Uh, he is also the founder of some amazing VR for healthcare programs, which we are excited to talk about. Please, everyone, welcome to Between Realities, Mr. David DeJong. Yo, dude. Well, hello. Yo, what's up, man? Thank you for joining us. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm doing very, very well. It's the weekend, huh? So uh, that was a good, uh, good step in the week. Heck and, yeah. Uh, how are you guys over there? We're good, man. We're yeah. doing good. The weather here is good. You know, it's, it's, it's bright and sunny out here. We noticed yeah. it's still bright and sunny where you are in the Netherlands at 9 p.m., which is, was blowing our minds before the show. Yeah. 9 p.m. and the sun is just shining out there. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's awesome. Crazy. Netherlands get is the place I've always wanted D's, to go. People, get those vitamin D's. Yeah. yeah. Get those D's, y'all. Go get them <laughs> D's. Well, we're stoked to have you, man. Um, you know, I, uh, I, you know, I don't know if I really had a chance to, to like officially meet you in, uh, at, at Oculus Connect 6. I know, we, you know, we we're kind of like hanging out in a bunch of the same groups. And, you know, you and Nathy were walking around like, I don't know, you guys were like celebrities cruising around in there, like decked <laughs> out in like the most legit gear ever. Like they're wearing like designer like jackets and stuff and just like fresh to death cruising around in this thing. And everybody wanted a PC, a piece of these uh, Dejong boys. Like I can only imagine <laughs> what it's like for you to go to these conventions and uh, just roll around. Like, do you get like this vibe that like, you know, all eyes are on you a little bit every now and then? No, because I have my eyes on the prize because it's always a busy schedule. Because like the thing is like everybody comes from all around the world, and everybody wants to like meet up. We said like hang out with the, with the same uh, same groups of people. But then you also have the appointments. Uh, you wanna you have people from China coming there, you have people from the U.S. coming there, people from Europe. Even though we live in Europe, we also don't see everybody. So just like getting everybody like yeah, hotel rooms secret demos mm -hmm. dinner lunch and then the show floor also just running around and trying to capture as much as we can 
So yeah, at the moment, like when we're walking there, we're just like eyes on the prize. <laughs> we're not like who's looking at us, right. what's going on. You're it's like, just like you're you're so laser uh, focused. Well, maybe maybe that's the manager perspective, though, right? Like you know, I guess I would hope that uh, you know the manager would be like, hey, yo, listen, no, we got shit to do. Like we're no, like clear the clear the crowds. Like let's get this done. You know, mm -hmm. maybe it's a little bit mm -hmm. different, a little bit different for Nathy because he's the guy you know in front of the camera all the time. Um, but it's it's an amazing thing, you know, like two bros working together. Boom, you blow this channel up. Like. Um, I don't know. Do you want to tell us a little bit, just a little bit about like maybe the origins of the channel, right? Like how you guys kind of got up and running and then, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of, uh, like a little bit of, uh, what, what you think helped propel you guys, uh, to the forefront. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and then going back on the manager role, like I'm always trying to make sure that Navy has like food and also that like there's like some some also some balance in it because like it's a lot. Like it's demanding the people on the show floor, the developers, and like we'll bump into so many people. Uh, so yeah, just get him get it organized and structured so he can make it for for a week or a few days mm -hmm. and not be burned out after the first day. Right. Um, but yeah, the origins. Uh, yeah, we're brothers. So like yeah, we're five years apart. So yeah. I, I seen the guy in diapers. Right. <laughs> That's how it all started. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, we we grew up together. Uh, same household. Parents are still together. And um, That's nice. I think like first game wise things. I think like because I had a Game Boy. Uh, I think that that's how it started a little bit. It was our own, like our shared uh, console or whatever it was, Game Boy, Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket, black and white. Nice. Uh, and so that that's how it all started. Yeah, and then uh, with the with the PlayStation One, uh, like it was our first real console, or so I was stoked with it. Just had one game where I played it the whole time. Which one? And I think it was Ratchet and Clank back in the day. And nice. Yeah, and then my dad would come home with a secondhand computer, and. We still have, we would have uh, uh, games on floppy disks, uh, as I can, can remember, like the big floppies, the small floppies. Uh, that's like the first few games I played, and then uh, Nate was always uh, looking, and then he started playing, and then uh, we played a lot, and we played more, and we <laughs> had more games. And I have to be honest, we, we pirated. Like when we were younger, we had like an uncle who was a pirate. <laughs> so mm. we got all the pirated Hell discs, yeah. the Twilight discs. And uh, yeah, and I'm playing games and like our mom was not so fond of it. So she was always saying like, yeah, you guys can play so much computer because like you get squared eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the classic things. And I also still remember them when we were very young because then our, our mom is a, is a nurse and she works night shifts. So then uh, my dad would be home and my dad uh, cares a little less than, uh, than our mom. Nice. So then uh, if our mom would be, because she would do night shifts, so she would sleep all day, we could play games all day. And even the games that uh, maybe were not for our age, but then uh, he would just like keep an eye, like <laughs> keep an eye closed. Um, so yeah, and then th that's like, and then Nate, like it was already really hard to get him behind the computer, uh, get him away behind the computer. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was more the guy who was still like, uh, like uh, hang out with friends, more socialized, and he would be really like, computer was really his thing. Mm -hmm. And I still remember like uh, what I said as a joke with my mom with the squared, squared uh, eyes, but there were a lot of friends and family members concerned of the consumage of uh, computer content. Mm -hmm. uh, especially the, the amount of time we would spend behind a computer. And now the same you... people say, oh, look how successful. Uh, uh -huh. uh, I was going to oh, say, dude. That he... <laughs> it's interesting because it's the exact same people who would say this is gaming is bad. And you have to go outside, you know, all these kinds of stereotypes. And now it's the same people are uh, cherishing uh, yep. like, uh, his uh, career. That does not surprise yeah. me at all all mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like singing a different tune when you see fucking seven hundred fifty thousand subs or however the hell many <laughs> you guys have on nathy's channel it's insane um real quick we're gonna say hi to grumpy duck who i saw slid in here we saw the bearded bard mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. vr trend mm -hmm. magazine slip in here as well what's um, up guys Good I, uh, to see you. you know, I poked Nathy right before, uh, right before the show. And I was just like, Hey man, you know, I've got your bro coming on, you know, pretty cool. We had Nathy on the show. Um, I don't know, early, like early in the season, I think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was awesome. You know, we had a great time hanging out and talking with him. And I, so I hit him up and I was like, Hey man, you know, your brother's coming on, you know, you want to like, you know, any, anything uh, that you know, that we should say or, or ask or whatever. And, uh, dude, the guy's so wholesome, man. He said, uh, what did he say? You got a thing? He said, I'm very inspired and proud of my brother uh, with the things that he does. Also, a lot of what I achieved, I owe to him. 
That's beautiful. What a nice what a, that's all guys, I said, guys, man. you know, man, brotherhood, right? I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into it. So it's pretty amazing, dude. Like and and, and, and that, words. what's that? I said great words, great words. Yeah, <laughs> great words from a great dude. And uh so so what do you think it was that like that like that made it work? You know, was it some like behind the, the scenes manager tricks that you pulled or, or you know was it was it nathy's charismatic personality you know with a combination of them like what made it happen or we all know it's david all the way <laughs> well i'm gonna let him <laughs> say it <laughs> let out the secret but uh, no but uh yeah like what made it like in a yeah as brought because like your brother so like uh there has been a long time we were because there's also the I age difference of five years, and I left the house when I was pretty young. So, like, yeah, there have been times it was not as smooth as it is now. Right. Uh, but uh, no, I, like, I, I went on a big world trip, traveled around the world uh, for one and a half year, and I did my internships abroad because, like, I have a, I have a background as a social worker. I started social work for uh, for nine years. Mm. Um, so I went to Indonesia to uh, do an internship for children with a, a mental dis- disability. And I worked with youth in Suriname and South uh, South America to uh, get them uh, back on track from uh, from the, uh, the 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 not so good path you can walk in life. Uh, so I'm counseling and guiding them into jobs and uh, housing, education, those kinds of things. So after that big trip, then I came back and I think like already when I was traveling, we had a call and then yeah, the channel started to be like bigger than just a hobby. Um, right. And also, Nate never had the intention to start a company. I'm also I have my own company now, but I, I'm also never had the intention to start my own company. But it, yeah, it got bigger and bigger, and then then we started talking like hmm, maybe you need to sign in as a, as an official company and like uh, start paying taxes, like uh, most companies do. Some companies don't, but <laughs> as I said, YouTube still have to pay uh, pay taxes. Um, so yeah, that, that's how it started a little bit, and then we started to collaborate and work together. And yeah, in the beginning, it was like uh, because I, I, what I said, I came back from my big trip, uh, so I, I sold everything I had. Like I, before, I had a house and I had a car and whatever, and I sold everything, went on a big trip, wow. came home, but then I didn't have anything, just three boxes of clothes. So I went back at my parents living there uh, in the small room because uh, Nate took the big room, my old room, <laughs> and I'm still living here. <laughs> And then he had uh, in his uh, bedroom, um, uh, he had like a, like a bath and, and a desk and, uh, and a big closet. Uh, and that's what his like work area was. So he would wake up and start working. And I had like my, my the, the small room and it was one like uh, closet in there. And then, then the, uh, what's it called? And I not stand alone, but like you could like with the quest, like even with the trackers, you could like for the first time walk around because before he would make his content just like sitting on on, on his mm-hmm. chair, like I am. And then the 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 the, the trackers scale. came. Yeah. And uh, then then the whole vibe changed. But the, the issue was that he had his closet, so the closet had to go. So we had to share a closet uh in my room or like at my parents place in my room small room had a closet she had a closet he could then like walk around and make content like uh, like uh like a um, room space and yeah that that's like how i think it started and we started to really to like i was studying and we're both grinding in our own like field and doing what we liked and um i think that's how it started like how can we yeah, support each other and uh, yeah in the beginning i supported uh, him by being like his financial uh, uh counselor and then as a, as a as a brand manager business manager like supporting him to like build out and yeah, in the end like then we started like living together at a certain moment when it went so well to rent the house together and it's now native still living there and it's like a house slash studio so it was like okay if we want to build up a studio uh like what do we need and what do we need to live there and uh, so yeah, we made all the the, the the choices. We thought about it, and then yeah, we really fully started. I fully started working and dedicating my time to his career uh, next to my study. Um, so yeah, and that's that's how we started building it all up. That's awesome, dude. What's up, sweaty nugget, nice. JJ? What's up, Sean from Rendered Reality? Our dudes, thank you guys for dropping in. We're here Sampler nineteen, David, David Jong, Sampler nineteen is also here. A pleasure to see you guys. I'm glad we're all together today on this beautiful Friday where the mm-hmm. sun is shining, where the, whether or not you're in Arizona or the Netherlands. Um, <laughs> so this trip, dude, like, I guess we yeah. should like learn a little bit more about this because you sold all your shit. Like I, I follow you on social media. I've, I 
saw evidence of this thing. I saw you like doing like that ice therapy and all that stuff. And like, you're just like out in the fucking jungle and shit, you know, you're like, you're <laughs> everywhere. Um, you know, but you, you mentioned that it's like, you are like a social worker too. So I'm assuming that you've taken some of your travels and you're kind of putting into some of this and, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit too about like the reality of VR for good, right? And VR for healthcare. You know, I'm sure as a social worker, you have learned, I know that you've learned to incorporate VR into a lot of this stuff. So um, I guess, uh, I don't know, like, let's, let's talk a little bit about, uh, about your company, you know, and about, about what you are, are doing with VR for good. Um, why don't you give us an introduction to it? Yeah, so um, what I said, I'm a social worker, so I started social work for nine years. And then I've been in and out social work, different kind of uh, clients, uh, people with a mental disability, young people, older people, people with psychiatric diseases, like you name it, like I, I worked with it, uh, I worked with them. Um, and that, that already gave me really like a, lo a lot of expertise. And then what I said, I, I did my big trip. So and that's like with the, the conventions and like supporting native traveling around the world and going to China and all these like far travels like that really like made me really confident and like traveling around the world by myself doing five continents uh, and, and like around like 20, 25 countries. That's crazy. So like I, like I, I was, it was a crazy, crazy one and a half year for me. Uh, but then that's why I got all this, uh, this knowledge and experience about traveling, um, and and the social work experience. So like, yeah, social work. And then I, after my bachelor's of social work, I think that was my, um, I had to write my thesis, and then uh, exposure therapy, uh, VR exposure therapy came came from the U.S. Also more to the Netherlands, and I did my uh, my thesis about. I think it was like 2015 or 16, I think. And so I did my thesis about, it and I was uh, just researching in the Netherlands which companies are working with exposure therapy and what are they doing, and how are they doing it. And I had that was the, one one guy, one facility said like, yeah, we bought an, Oc an Oculus Rift CV1, but we we still need to start. And other ones already like started for months and had a lot of like positive results. So that's how it kind of started for me, because in the beginning, I still remember the Oculus DK1 and, and Nate putting it on my face. And then I, I think it was Temple Coaster and I was sitting there and like this ball was behind me and <laughs> mind blowing, well, mind blowing the early days. Um, but ne I never made the link in those days, like with social work or healthcare. I never and I it was was cool. VR was cool, was, but it felt more like it wasn't as far as we are now. Uh, so it was not, not a gimmick, but it was like really early days. like. This is it. This is what you can do with it. But our, our imagination was not as far as it is nowadays. Right. Uh, at least mine, especially like coming from healthcare and social work. So that's how it all started. And um, yeah, then then I did my my thesis of uh, yeah my thesis about it. And then uh, I did a master's in uh, digital innovation in social work and healthcare. So how can you combine the the social work and healthcare aspect with technology? Uh, we use uh, design thinking as a method. Um, so like with the end user search for what are the issues you have in your current work or in your current flow of working or whatever, and how can we solve it with technology or how can we make your life better with technology? Mm -hmm. And then you go into a, a design, uh, design process. After that, uh, I, uh, I had this feeling like, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to go to a, a phase that it's like more like gaming slash uh, serious gaming and I, that's really a field i want to explore more so i did another master's <laughs> after oh, wow. master's in serious gaming so that was also very interesting so then i had like this combination between social work and healthcare, knowing how to find the the the, the problems and find solutions for those problems and how can you use like um gaming as an influence to to make uh, the, those solutions and besides that, of course, like I was still going with Native to conventions, and I had all the headsets to my in my hands uh, whenever we I wanted. So then I was like, oh, this is so, so interesting uh, as a technology to improve the well-being, like with exposure therapy. And there's like some examples, but uh, and then I started really like researching and got a job at an elder care facility uh, as a reality advisor, real technology advisor, very niche. Uh, for for the, the the market but then at the company they really believed uh, in in what i was doing in this technology but 
the thing was then I was like, okay, so I had this big ideas because I just like, I just graduated uh, and the, like, I was like really very familiar with the, the, the gaming industry and VR. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to make so many like games and things and like two games for nurses and, 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 and games for elderly. And I had all these like big ambitions, but then I figured out that 3D development is very costly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not that easy i assume i mean i don't know for not, sure but not easy and the funding in, in healthcare is just like it's yeah like it's it's sometimes a little scandalous how uh, less of funding there is in healthcare mm -hmm. yeah that's uh, too bad so yeah the budgets were not there there were there were some people who did some cool stuff with oculus cv1 but not at the level that was scalable and that's like that's the thing in, in healthcare you need to have a technology or a solution that's scalable um so yeah so like i, I researched i tried a lot of things had this all these crazy ideas have an arcade for elderly an elderly arcade you can roll <laughs> under i even imagine even walking under, in on like, that you party roll under with your wheelchair <laughs> and then uh th then play this uh <laughs> vr games for elderly i have uh, this like, vision of like a bunch of old people occupying like a classic arcade you know and like no one else is in there just like elderly people like at the arcade cabinets and VR <laughs> on. I, it brings me joy to think about that <laughs> yeah. that was also the thing is like because i did some tests like i brought because like the first time that i had cv1 and had a laptop was the first time i could bring vr to uh to people like we had to, i i i, I uh, got the five focus the, the first one from china i flew to china to get it for the channel back in the day nice. wow. and that was the, the real first standalone that was in the market mm -hmm. there, there was no quest um yeah i remember yeah, so, that was a, a three de uh, three degree of freedom um uh controllers but it's six degrees of freedom headset and they were like six yeah. stops coming later i remember that whole thing it was it was so cool and it's so weird to think that that they were the very first to to kind of explore this avenue uh yet they yeah. haven't been able to reach the market that oculus has but anyway go ahead sorry <laughs> yeah, they didn't have like the the, the, pool, the pool that oculus got like in the market right. but it was the first one, but people forget about it. But they were the first. This uh, Crocs kind of looking uh, <laughs> blue headset. <laughs> um, so yeah, so so that's a. I had that. So I had that headset, and I really want to try that with elderly. But the thing is, like, there was no content. There was only this weird Chinese content on there, and also the West was not developing any content for the headset because it was like so far from the market. Um, so yeah, so I went with some elderly, did a lot of tests, and I was like, I was really cool. I did. Um, Oh, no, 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 I have a hard time like finding the game, but it was like this, uh, it was from End Dreams, one of their first products. Mm. Um, and then you could sit on an island, for example. That was really basic. You could sit on an island or you could go in the, into the mountains. And then you could like, I think like the, mo the, the most immersive thing you could do was grab a rock and throw it in the water, I think, and grab a stick. And that was it. Like there was not <laughs> much to do. But um, yeah, so, they, uh, so I used that game to try with elderly to see what is the effect of VR uh, on them. Uh, these people like it was this one lady who who uh, lived with her husband for many years in in Switzerland, and the moment she had a headset on and we were in the mountains, like the, the, the she was really getting all the memories again uh, from that day when she was still living there with her husband. So she got really emotional and started sharing stories about the days she was still living there and about her husband. So that already like as a person that already like yeah yeah you're like um, okay this is something that, that really hits you and then it's like and then there was this other lady. Who was also there, and then because you also have this one environment, and I think you're at the, um, in Finland or something, and you see the northern light, and there was this snow falling out of the sky, and this lady said like that she had she, she had she really wanted to go once to see the northern light, and then ah, she was like in her 90s, so she could never physically go there anymore, so she had a headset on, and then uh, she said like, is this how the northern light is in real life? And I said, this is it. And uh, that, that this, this is how it is. And she was like, so I've seen the Northern Light. Wow. And then she was like wow. putting her hands, because we then like, yeah, you know, there were controllers, but you didn't have hands. Right. Um, and she would stick her hand because like where the snowflakes come out of the sky. She was like, like putting her hands up. And then she was like really enjoying just to be yeah, somewhere in, in, her, in, 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 in a future reality. Wow. Uh, so then, then I already saw like, okay, yeah, this is, is really powerful also for elderly. Uh, so then I had all these ideas of building things for elderly. So that's more like um, more like an idea because like the, the the thing in healthcare is like the the um, the funds is in healthcare. Most time they're more targeted to uh, like 
training or like actual health healthcare mm-hmm. uh, then uh, tailored to um like activities like this um mm-hmm. so there's not that much budget so it's like it's really a shame that uh i then i saw like okay there's no budget so then i can't develop anything uh even though like the the reactions you get from people for especially the elderly and and how they they feel afterwards and the stories they have is like oh this is such a powerful tool and i would love to really like build stuff for them i still i still do i still have this inside of me it's still this this dream to eventually do it but then yeah you have to go through a different route (laughs) um to 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 get there so yeah, that's how I started with the, at the care facility, and then uh, I worked there for. I'm still working there. Uh, I worked there for a few years, and then um, I started to read more into 360. So it's uh, obviously that's not VR. We use VR headsets for 360, right. but uh, uh, then we started to experiment with that, and then uh, in the care facility, we're like, oh, this looks like it was more for the for the for for the staff, like training, like we called embodied learning. So putting them in a situation uh, they would normally never be in. So that can be, for example, a fire drill. Uh, it can also be a certain behavior of clients. It can be counseling one of your uh, interns. Uh, it can be uh, like uh, swallowing for elderly. Uh, so there's like many different uh, situations you never would want to be in as a nurse, uh, but you can be in that situation once in your career or twice. Uh, or sometimes more often but most of them it's just a few times but you want to be p- prepared and the thing is like now like yeah you have books you have e-learning like everything is there but like there's such a like i call it an empathy gap between practice uh and and, and theory and and the, it's in between there so you so you want to train people with certain situations and you want to repeat those um those situations and be repeatable uh, so we do like we do it with uh, 360 uh, and then it's like an interactive video. So what we do is like you have a certain selection of of, uh, of answers in the situation, and everybody can. It's like the Bandersnatch Netflix uh, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Choose you you are in control of the of the scenes. So we can all play the same 360, uh, but have a different res- uh, outcome. Uh, and we collect the, the data, so you collect small data, so you can see uh, maybe everybody answered question five in the wrong way. Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, does it mean that the, qu- the question was not correct? Or does it mean that the, the nurses don't have enough knowledge about this certain topic? And maybe you can go with an e-learning into that, uh, that topic. So and we call it then blended learning. So we don't use VR as like the, the, the VR is not the goal, it's not the aim to use VR and that's like, that's it. So it's like combined with like uh, with normal learning. So like the the VR is like an extra dimension on the the the, the stuff you have to read and the videos you have to watch and the uh, practical side. Right. So I guess I guess uh, what my question is then is like, is is VR like legit? Right. In healthcare, like is this a truly powerful tool that is or can or will be used to truly help people. And I'll, I'll guess I'll give a little bit more here. I, I kind of almost feel like like VR right now is almost perceived like TVs in the classroom were when I was growing up. You know, like it felt it almost felt like the teacher felt like we were getting a free day when they wheeled the TV in and like put on the educational film, you know, and we're all like, yes, fucking TV. We don't actually have to learn, you know, <laughs> and like I, I don't know, like I feel like I would like maybe zone out doing some of those. I'm sure I watched a lot and maybe retained a good amount of information. Nowadays, it's very rare that we turn to textbooks or anything like that. We're reading and scrolling and like watching mm-hmm. videos all the time. You know, now videos are like probably the primary way to learn something. But there was a time when it was being introduced into education and it was like, I don't know, I say I would say it was maybe met with some resistance. You know, like, uh, do we need a wheel? Oh, God, just putting TVs in front of these kids, you know, that thing or whatever. And uh, I could, I bet you that in the classroom, you could argue about the effectiveness of wheeling a TV into a, a classroom and playing a movie. Do you think there, that VR is in any of that? Do you like, cause you just said like VR is not the goal, but do you feel like maybe for a lot of people in the industry, it is like, they're just like doing what they can and maybe just like looking for as many opportunities as they can to incorporate VR into it. Or is VR truly um, something that can benefit it and, and will benefit it? 
That's a bit double because there's like there's people in the industry, also in the healthcare industry, who are focused on VR. Like so, like I also see like so many articles that you probably also see it, especially in my field of view. That they have people with well, it's not even a cardboard, it's like this plastic cardboard kind of things, and then they have a fo- and like a photo, and then like the hands go up, and then it's like oh, it's like this right. is magic, and yeah. it's like oh, this is a headset like you could buy at a local supermarket for three euros, like already four years ago. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's some some people who like want to sell VR as like, well, here's VR, uh, but I really want to make impact, like impact in healthcare. So it's also like the mission statement of our company, but also myself, I really want to like make healthcare better with AR and VR. Um, what is your company? The challenge is like, we have all these great headsets, we have this great content, but what is the entry level for care organizations? What are the budgets for these care organizations? And that's not 3D development, uh, unfortunately, unless they all work together and and, and build something. Um, so yeah, like the entry level for healthcare in the Netherlands, at least, is is 360. Um, and at the moment, it's not, it's not scalable. So the, at the moment, it's the, the hard thing about 360. Even with 360, like a care facility makes maybe one one 360 video for two years, for one one in two years, they buy some headsets. As you may know, like in two years, your headset is already you know, mm-hmm. not that outdated, but goes fast, goes really fast. So the thing is they, they buy like 20 headsets because they have 3,000 uh, employees, for example. So if you want to train everybody with a 360 training or with a, with a VR training, you, you need to have like 20 headsets and then a really tight schedule to train everybody. But in the moment, you train everybody and then you have one 360 and that's it because they, they can't make their own. Uh, they can't make multiple. And then the problem is like uh, that that there's like um, a lot of different care facilities who not all work together. So at the moment, what we're doing is like making like a like a Netflix model uh, for VR. Uh, so we combine all the 360s together, and they they get a membership per headset. Uh, and then every two months, we make content for them. So mm. we together mm. with them, we say, okay, what are the needs? What are the topics that are really important in healthcare at the moment? Uh, and we make together with them, we make new content. So what's and your company called? To get it, the scalability. What, uh, what's your company called, David? It's uh, called Dare Health Innovation. So yeah, Dare to, to, to innovate. So we're really trying to do it in a different way well, with cutting edge technology, but then at the entry level. So yeah, I could get like a Quest 2, uh, but we don't have content for the Quest 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for example, like another product we have is like an... Uh, it's an app. Uh, it's an app store. It's called Arna, A R N A, um, and it's an information platform. So what that means is it's an information platform for medical devices. So caregivers uh, walk around uh, in the in the care homes and facilities, and then sometimes they, they they bump into this medical product and they don't know how that product works because they haven't been working for it, with it for months or never worked with it. And the issue at the moment is like, and that's like healthcare wide, like the information is not all at one place. So some nurses Google, some nurses use YouTube, some go to the, to the mm. website of the supplier, some go in the WhatsApp group, some go on the internet. So the information is everywhere. Um, and so, so we have this app and then like talking about the entry level. So we had this uh, design labs, we call them. So talking with uh, end users, what their needs are. An interesting part was they said like, yeah, like we need all the information. So they, we have the videos in the app, we have the PDF sheets, all the information is in the app. Uh, and then they said, we want photos uh, because we didn't tell them the solution we had. And we, they said, we, we want high definition photos we can zoom in on so we know how the product looks. And then I, we were like, this is <laughs> augmented reality. Yeah. <laughs> So then, but then at the entry level again, so we have an information platform, it's just a regular app, you scan a QR code, you get the information about a medical device, and as a feature, you have an AR function, which means you have uh, the, the app, you scan it in a room, and you have the, the product in the room. Um, and it's still, it's very basic. If you look at AR, it's like, okay, but it's almost, almost looks like a gimmick. Right. But this is, this is the entry level, an AR model. And of course, there will be troubleshooting. Of course, there will be AR glasses. Of course, there will be so many more. But at the moment, we really made the decision uh, like to go on uh, iPads uh, and, or uh, tablets and, and smartphones because that's at the moment for most care so that's the products they use. And you can have an AR function on there. Um, so it, like, it's a very different entry level. So it's 360 and it's an AR 3D model as a feature in an app. 
Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think uh, uh, healthcare can benefit from VR and AR, but I think for a lot of people, it's really finding also developers or companies in healthcare, try to find that entry level. Um, because what I see, I see a lot of like startups starting with this great app they built for a VR headset, but not everybody has a VR headset. Mm -hmm. And then for a lot of people, it's really far from the bed. And what, I said, what, I, what we briefly spoke about before the podcast, like, I still have a lot of people like I, I, that I liberate their souls from from not having VR in their life, mm -hmm. and that's like on a weekly basis. When we so it's like still so many people have not experienced VR, and if they experience VR, a lot of people are really disappointed because they tried the cardboard stuff, right? Because they tried all this roller coaster stuff on these conferences or wherever they went. Yeah, it's like, and, and then some people are just scared and like, and Man. we want VR to be part of that training. So be every two months, you have like a, you have a training and VR is a part of that training to really put you into that situation to really reflect on like how you uh, can approach a situation in a different time, in another time. What is it about uh, being, what is it about like setting those souls free with VR? That's like a religious thing for all of us. It's almost like finding a, like a, a soul that needs to be saved. You know, it's like <laughs> you recruit somebody to your religion when you get them to see the beauty and magic of VR in a way. Like I get, I feel like it's the same satisfaction. I don't know. I feel like if I was recruiting to my religion or if I showed you VR for the first time, <laughs> I, I feel like I've done my part in my community. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um it's, it's a killer experience man just to watch someone see this this future that they only ever dreamed about in maybe movies or, or, or in bed when they were sleeping right like mm -hmm. to actually see this stuff come to fruition and be like no 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 check this yeah, out and you really. put that on their face and they're like oh my god mm -hmm. you know i i have um i don't know if we've ever talked about this but i actually have a, a little bit of experience in this so back when i had my it company uh we we sold um a, a VR product called XR Health. And it was for it was for people going through physical therapy um, that needed to improve their range of motion after after um, you know accidents or, or whatever the case may be that why they needed that therapy. But they would go in and they would play these games where they had to move their arms in certain ways and move their head back and forth. And and to them it was like a little game. But in real life, what was happening is this app was collecting all this data about their range of motion and where it should be, and over time, over each session, it would build these graphs to actually show the patient and show the doctors and the insurance companies um, the actual um, like progress, the progress, the the real progress that was being made. And this was because of the you know the hand tracking and the and the, the tracking on your data, face. Huh? Yeah, for reals, um, you could actually get these people to do the exercises that maybe is boring and mundane, and they, they're focusing on the pain when they're trying to turn their head. You know, but instead you're offering them this this scenario that's like that's game like. You know what I mean? And they have fun doing it. They um, get better while they're doing it. So, you know, healthcare in VR, I think, is a very powerful thing. And I think we're going to see a lot more amazing uh, uses for this in, in the future. I don't think this is going to slow down at all. Well, I think this is going to be a big deal. That's good. And, uh, you know, luckily yeah. we've got people like David out there who yes. are thinking for us and making this kind of shit happen. Yes. Uh, I think this is a good opportunity to maybe do a couple of promotions, right? First of all, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do it. This is the like first time it's ever been like a mid episode subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Um, there is a yeah. huge event that started today featuring a handful of our friends and, mm. uh, the both of the companies that we work for and one of our favorite quest games uh it is called the 15 minutes of fame uh tournament i guess mm -hmm. and it is being put on by super bright the developers of in death unchained for oculus quest and they have recruited four of our favorite youtubers uh beardo benjo soul fox steve nose and mateo 311 all homies all super awesome dudes and starting today you can go into in death unchained and compete for uh, like, I think it's like a timed run um, for B Haptics gear. There are four B Haptics vests, two X40s, two X16s up for grabs. And when you go in there and participate in this competition, you'll actually choose one of these four YouTubers to like, like champion for, right? And like your score goes towards their collective score and whichever one of those guys wins a thing, they get something for their community to give away. Nice. So it's kind of this like nice. really awesome thing. A bunch of YouTubers come together. One of the best Quest 2 games in Death Unchained is amazing. Um, I actually have a code for it. Maybe I'll give it away. 
Oh, there you go. Yeah. This is one of this is uh, like one of my favorite uh games on on the quest like when they this is the first time i've ever seen anyone bring a game to a mobile headset that was already on the pc but they actually improve it and it's better on the mobile headset than it is on the pc Straight i up. mean the, everything about this game is absolutely fantastic Straight on a up. quest it's, it's it's killer plus it has native b haptics integration right on the on the quest too yep. and and we haven't announced this yet so you guys are getting some exclusive information but uh we just got integrated uh cyber shoes got integrated into this so you could wear full full haptics shoes run around getting hit like with a full almost a deep dive experience so this is this is really cool stuff and we yep. really want to you know we really want to support these guys that are doing this because they're going to be able to give some cool prizes away 100 percent. and mm -hmm. like i said i do have a code for it uh that i got so how about um for let's let's call it two hours after the show ends so from 1 30 our time to 3 30 our time jump into our discord and uh type type uh unchained in in the general chat and if you do i'll put you in a giveaway and then i'll give away to whoever wants in, in death unchained so jump into discord and leave a comment um the other thing also uh something that i worked on this week is i just released a video today which is a promotion for the native integration and be haptics for doom 3 quest i just mm. played this week i played doom 3 completely wirelessly on the oculus quest with body haptics and it was fucking amazing I, wow it made me feel like i know i wasn't playing it but it made me feel like i was in like a half-life alex kind of game you know just like a full campaign like running around like crazy super intense monsters jumping out at me and um you know it's it's great with habits. it's crazy that this game was able to stand the test of time and and i know i've mentioned this before but this was actually like the original vr game Right. This is like when Palmer Lucky had a, 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 you know, a headset that was all duct taped together um, and showed John Carmack. John Carmack ported this game to it. And, and this is what they used to demo VR to people. And it's funny. There was all these lawsuits with ZeniMax and the game never actually hit the public uh, until recently where we have an official version on PSVR. Mm -hmm. And now we and, and Dr. Beef did an absolutely and his team an amazing job porting this over to the Quest. And it runs better than the PlayStation it's, version. It's so, super yeah. smooth, dude. I yeah. felt like I was playing a legit VR game. You would never know that this was some fucking game from 2004 that got ported. Mm -hmm. uh, and just to, to throw it back to Dr. Beef again, he and his squad, amazing to work with. Mm -hmm. So nice, like, so, like, on top of it, so enthusiastic. Like, you can tell that uh, Dr. Beef is passionate about this project. He was mm -hmm. passionate of, about the haptics integration. You could tell he had a lot of fun with it. And, and, and he integrated the cyber shoes into this as well. So another man. game where you can fully dive into this in a, an immersive way that is hard to get in a lot of different VR experiences where you feel your arms, your face, your chest, you walk with your feet. It's just incredible. Mm -hmm. This game, a 2004 game, if you t went back in time and told me this was going to be a thing, I'd have told you you were fucking nuts. Yep. But like, look at this is running on a mobile headset. And, it, and I mean, Blows my this, is, this is my cast my this mind. is my casted image you know like this looks yeah. pretty fucking good in this video and it, this is my bullshit blurry casted image you know like yeah. you get in there it looks really really good it so does. and i think you can get doom 3 on steam for like four or five bucks or something like yeah that. And, and so you can play this without the full version but it's the it's only a few levels right or it's a, the demo oh, or I'm, something i'm not sure or, or but you do if you grab doom and then you pull the the main files off of you, you stick have it on your to headset, you get, legally yeah. obtain doom 3 yes. in order to do this right yes. right a couple David, bucks legally obtained doom three <laughs> right you know what i'm talking about david legally obtaining <laughs> um so it's a couple so, couple dollars for this game it. nowadays it's fucking yeah. dope go get it go is get that it. is that it those was that it do we have anything else that we wanted to promote real quick uh i don't think so i mean as far as promotion stuff that that's really it. it's In not death, really promotion it's us be, it, you know yes. well i mean i guess that is, it but, is it's yeah. us promoting the things that we love and work on throughout yeah. the week and yeah. uh all that Good so stuff. Okay. how can you not want to play doom with haptics and all this shit it's like dope. do it so it. so let's talk about htc right because you uh david you just mentioned you know you you got the vive focus you flew across the world and went and got the original standalone we've messed around with the vive focus a little bit whatever right not that cool it was it is what it is yeah it wasn't very comfortable it wasn't mm -hmm. you know i i own a vive pro and i love it i think i actually like it more than the index um and that's probably after my lens mod right yeah. like I that did, lens mod i did the samsung yeah 
lens mod looks awesome, right? Maybe the gear VR a one, more, more mm -hmm. eye, eye strain, but beautifully, it's fucking gorgeous. It's, it's, it's great. There is no glare. There is no mm -hmm. uh, uh, god rays. I mean, it is. It is. But HTC clear. did had ViveCon this week, and I mm -hmm. actually went into Engage. I I did too. I went in there and yeah. I got on a plane. I got an HTC. Wasn't that cool? I got on an HTC Vive plane, and the only thing that pissed me off is that there was like no like guidance. You know, like when you get on the plane, it's not like please take a seat and we'll depart shortly. Like I'm just yeah. exploring a world, and then I get to this plane, and there's a bunch of people sitting on it. Yeah. And no one knows what the fuck is going on. <laughs> I was like, what are we doing, everyone? Everyone's like. Mm. <laughs> you're looking under the seat it was a gift yeah I'm like, what do i what do i do do i push a button like there's, i don't get it so i just kind of hung out and i was like starting to get impatient and then out of nowhere it's like ding prepare yep. for takeoff and i was like oh shit okay sat down and it loads you into the world and it was a cool conference I mean, I and then, but but cool. before that even right it bring it brings you into the airport like you go from the plane to the airport Mm -hmm. Right. And then from the airport, you go into the conference yep. where you're sitting around with all these people and all of a sudden a hologram of the person appears. It's not some avatar. It's the person yep. standing there in this virtual world. And it looked absolutely fucking incredible. It really did look good. Yeah. They bring up this massive screen behind them. And then as they're talking about the products, you know, like there's a huge HTC Vive yeah, uh, Pro 2 that like, around. yeah, that's huge. Just, you know, rotating around in front of you and you can really see all the details and get a really good uh, idea of the product. I don't know. So, all of that said, this was boring. <laughs> like it was cool you know like getting on the plane getting yeah. oh hologram oh htc5 floating this is dope but uh after a while i was like looking at my watch being like okay um this is not exciting anymore there's a hilarious post on reddit that got a bunch of upvotes where they clipped every time they said business <laughs> in five yeah. it's like business 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 yeah. business, 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 business business it's like holy shit um so I don't know. There's a lot I could say about this, but the, the main thing that I will say is that I am so fucking salty that there is not a new set of controllers with the yeah. Vive Pro 2. Yeah, they really screwed the po pooch on that one, man. I am so they pissed really off. I I saw it. I saw it because like I saw the update and like I was really I was excited about the Focus, uh, but then I saw the Vive Pro 2 and I, and I saw the controllers and like ow. 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 I know these are these are people these are the wands from 2016. They're not even I, from what I saw. They're not even giving you the updated 2018 blue ones that work with the <laughs> Vive 2 trackers, right? So you are paying $1300 or $1400 whatever it comes out to for this full kit and you're getting uh, a Vive 2 uh, Vive Pro 2 which actually it looks does pretty look cool, right? I mean, yes. we got a 120 degree field of view. We have 120 hertz, right? We have the comfort of the Vive Pro um, because really what they did is they didn't, uh, they didn't really update the design at all. They no. changed the color. That's about it. But they put in these sick 5K uh, panels, right? So the resolution is very high. It's not quite as high as like a, like a G2. Right, right. No, I don't think, no. but uh, but but I guess it's probably going to look beautiful, right? But you you are going to be stuck with these ones. Imagine if the PlayStation Five came out with the same controllers <laughs> as the PS Four. I mean, you know, with 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 the PlayStation Five, the thing the controllers are the selling point. I got so, so excited when I saw the Vive Focus, the, the Focus Three. Like, oh yeah, the Focus Three. The, yeah. the trailer comes out. It's like, and these controllers, and I'm yes, like, yes. Fuck yeah. yeah, I was like, here we go, everybody, new controllers. Yeah. And they're like, and Vive Pro 2, for all you gamers, don't yeah. worry, we haven't forgotten about you. Here's no <laughs> new controllers. And and if you've never heard my rant about the index controllers, I'll, I'll keep it very index brief. Or, or... Index or? Okay. Index. Because that's, that's what everyone says. They're like, oh, well, they have the index controllers, and they know they can't compete with the superiority of the index controller, so they didn't make it. But in, in my opinion, the grip of the index controller is completely unreliable. I cannot yeah. rely on that grip for anything. Agreed. And that, as a serious gamer, is completely unacceptable. I mean, it's acceptable because I'm accepting it. And not only can you choice, but... not rely on it, but it degrades over time. So you have to right. squeeze it harder and harder and harder the longer you have these controllers. And the controllers, as we know, break a fucking lot. <laughs> yeah, they do. A lot. I am personally on my fourth set of controllers, and I just got my fourth set of controllers after two and a half months of going back and forth with the support team. You know what I had to do to finally get those controllers? I had to email Gabe Newell directly, the, the founder and CEO 
of Steam and Valve, right? The guy, the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company. As soon as I emailed that guy, boom, they're like, we're sending them out. Didn't even have to send my original ones back or like before they sent them out, they just sent them out. And it's like, what, what is what is happening over there? This, so I, th them saying that you can use the, the, the Valve Knuckles is not a viable I, alternative for I me. completely agree. What are you thinking about HTC, David? Yeah, but then about the, the controllers of, of the, the 5.2 or 5 Pro 2, are there, is the weight also, did they reduce the weight or is it the same? Because also the you were just talking same. about for the gamers, the but same. also business-wise, yeah. people who also have a business like and have to use that, they're heavy. They are they super are. heavy. And also, they're not nice like laying in your hands. I'm like wondering, did they at least make them lighter or are they, are they just... They didn't do anything. No, nothing. They're the, That's they're the same. why I'm they're so goddamn sad. Just like with the Cosmos shipped with those original 2016 controllers as well in Vive uh, Base Station 1.0. So if you want to upgrade these things, not only do you have to buy new controllers, but you have to buy new base stations for 2.0 tracking. It is a freaking nightmare well, when it comes to the, the controllers. Focus 3 controller, and I feel like I'm so close yet so far. Yeah, I'm what like, are they oh, doing? It's like right out of my reach. It's like, oh, there it is. I'm not going to get a fucking Vive Focus 3. Yeah, no you can't. You cannot. You can't even buy it yeah. if you're. They won't allow you to. <laughs> this is strictly enterprise. You can't even go on there and spend thirteen hundred dollars for this headset. And and let's be real. I feel like thirteen hundred dollars for for a headset like this isn't really terrible. You just have to like understand what Facebook is doing to subsidize the cost of the Quest. Mm -hmm. You cannot compare this to a three hundred dollar Quest because. Va uh, because HTC doesn't have the data to hey, sell on you to make up for that money. Really quick. Yes. Did, Hussein X is here. Did you ever get in touch oh, with him? Oh, Hussein X, you are here. You were the winner of of the VR Trend autographed um, magazine, and we've been trying to ping you and, and do all this stuff. So please uh, get in touch with us after the show so we can mail that out to you. Congratulations. Congratulations, Hussein X. You deserve X. it. Yes. Um, so what about the Vive Focus 3 then? I mean, this is this something that you uh, would eyeball for, for what you do, David? No. 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 You're like, no. <laughs> yeah, that must be hard, right? $1,300 price tag for some of these companies that don't have a budget for this stuff, right? There would have scalability, so then that, that's yeah. not a... No, that's not that's not on our roadmap. Well, and here's but the... yeah, what I think of, what I think of HCC, like uh, like we also like partly, of course, uh, owe our uh, career to uh, HCC. Or do we owe a career to Valve? Uh, I don't know how yeah, you right. wanna. <laughs> yeah, you you be the Valve for sure. HCC, okay, Valve Valve build and HCC brought it to the market. Yep. Uh, and because with with of course that budget is running down on the HCC phones and everything, so they had to make a shift, like uh, the the Kodak of this world. Um, so uh, yeah, like HTC, I don't know. Like it's it's a weird one in the market, especially like if they they, they do their marketing based. Like it seems like they always market the gamers and uh, yes. the, 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 yeah. uh, the that was the gonna be my next point. But then the moment they release it, oh, it's business. It's yeah. like, huh, but you make it so cool. Like why well, why business is just business? Yeah, B two B. But also HP is of course doing that. Like it's also more HP is also kind of like a B two B kind of. Uh, party and also like make it to gamers and it's like it's kind of is but it kind of isn't so it's like all these companies want to eat from two two Dude, walls yeah, i'm two borderline sides. i'm borderline insulted you know it's yeah. like how the fuck dare you like how dare yeah. you take advantage of the excitement and uh, enthusiasm of the consumer market to promote your business products you know like yeah. when i I look at this but they, focus. But they know influences like you guys like they know like doesn't matter what headset they bring out they tease a little they know youtubers will talk about it they yeah. know mm -hmm. influencers will talk about it. and because we want to be up to date to the market so we want to bring this to our followers and and the people in the chat and the people who are listening and watching we want to bring you the new the, the newest news like the scoops we want to give you everything because we want you to be informed but then on the other hand it's like it's a double because they know like if they market it like this we will talk about it as a, as a game, VR gaming community, but then on the other hand, they also know like then then it also like will go over to business, so business will also buy it. And but that's their market. But they're like it's and also like what they did in the past, like sending headsets over or like it's like okay, but why do you send the influencer and then the headset if you only want to go B two B? Like maybe you should do it like yeah, and also like if you look at like how they market their products, like they're doing some B two B stuff. 
but they're not like focused that much. It's more like influencer market. That's where they're focused on. But in the B2B, then you have a different approach and different marketing tools. Like I don't see that much like do them doing like in the B2B market. I, I don't see them. Um, this is so, yeah, me up, then, dude. And like, yeah, what I think of HC, like I'm, I'm happy that they're there because especially for our Chinese uh, um, team or uh, the, the, the people who are on the other side of the world who also want to play VR, who also want to go to arcades, also want to build up their businesses using VR. And they don't have the access to 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 uh, the, the Oculus headsets, as you as you said, like mm-hmm. that, that's the thing. So I'm really happy they're there. But like, yeah, also when we go to China there, they, they also longing for something more next level than what HTC is offering. But it's a solid headset like the, mm-hmm. the, the Vive Pro. Yeah, it's a solid headset, especially if you own arcade, you own a business, you can drop it once or twice. Yeah, there are other headsets out there. You drop them once and it's like game over. Yeah, that's, uh, so that's not even something I would tough. ever even consider. Uh, I mean, I love my Vive Pro, and frankly, I'm looking at that Vive Pro too and being like, dude, that looks cool. Like, I would love to upgrade to it. You know, I like know. that sounds great, but I'm just so pissed about the way they marketed all this shit. Yeah. I'm pissed that they made the headset that we all begged for and then won't give it to us. Yeah. And um, well, look, what about this? What about that they discontinued the Vive Pro and they only had the Vive Pro I available? Now this new headset comes out at, this, at, at more expensive price with no eye tracking. Where the, is the eye tracking? That's a good question. Right? I mean, this is supposed to be the, the headset. You know, w- one of the other things that I feel like is a little bit misleading as well is that they're marketing this as a 120 degree field of view headset. Now, I haven't used this. I have no idea. This is complete speculation. But the original Vive was marketed at 110 degree field of view. For anyone that's used it, they know it's not 110 degrees, right? Field of view is very subjective to your face, to, uh, you know, if you really want to cram that thing in, take the face gasket out and have those lenses touching your eyeballs, you know, that's one thing. But just to pull it out of the package and wear it, that thing was not 110 degree field of view. So if you add 10 degrees to that, is it really 120 degrees? Is that, you know, or are, is it, is it going to be more like 100 degrees, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's 10 degrees higher than what they had before. Uh, so I don't know. This is something that we're going to have to try and we're going to have to figure out. And here's, I wish uh, Expos were still a thing so we could try it here's out. Here's some other horse shit I read too. Someone said that if you were to use the Vive wireless adapter, it knocks all the fucking It knocks the back. resolution down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do like that that's available, right? Because if they are going enterprise, if this is truly an enterprise-based product. Well, the Vive Pro 2 is not. Vive Pro 2 is a consumer-based product, right? No, well, no, it's enterprise, but but you but a consumer can buy it mm. where you cannot buy the Focus at all in this region of the world, right? So this is still uh, for enterprise. Um, but and if, if you, but if you're saying this, it's subjective for the for the yeah. uh, for the field view, is it then is it then just a market? Is it a marketing tool then? Oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. You know when 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 uh, the index came out, Valve was like, hey, listen. We don't want to even name the field of view because it's so different for everybody. We're going to say it's around 135, but it might be 110 for some people. It might be 140 for other people. It is not something that you can measure that's the same for each person. And and Vive originally, you know, made those numbers a little higher to be more attractive. So I don't know exactly how this is going to play out. I'm, I'm not sure. I would really like to try one because I'm a huge fan of the of the Vive Pro. But it's weird that they didn't they didn't change the aesthetics. They changed the color only. It's the same shell. It's the same strap. Um, it's all pretty much the same. I would almost think that this should be like the Vive Pro Platinum. Do you know what I mean? Right. Especially with without any changes to the controllers. The controllers, your hands are just as important as your visuals and so is the sound it's all a very combined experience that really brings you to another place mm-hmm. so you know what makes, makes me curious yeah are they pulling an oculus no, are they pulling a facebook that are slowly does this is their last cash grab on on the on the tethered headset that's a you good, know, like that's what, a good what question. Oculus did, like kind of with, with the with mm-hmm. the with, with the Rift S, you know, mm-hmm. kind of is this the last, like, okay, like for the people who are in business, for the people who enjoy this headset, and like, because you can still build great things yeah. and w- work with it, uh, then we give you a last, and that's it. Because like, yeah. I, I'm really confused because you spend all this budget on the Five Focus Three, uh, also on developing, and then 
all the parts of the cosmos. So the, at least you can do a redesign. You can make it slim. Right. You can make it smart. You can make it lighter. Yeah. You can make it. You can, like why? Why is this decision being made? Is this the end? Well, I mean, so question. so first of all, manufacturing costs are going to go are going to be way less because they already have all the things they need to build the shell, right? They just change the ink out and whatever you know to to color the front plate. That's about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, instead, put in this display, put in these lenses, um, and and that's it. The core, the shell is the same. The manufacturing from that standpoint is pretty much going to be the same. It's going to be a lot cheaper for them to get this out there. And I think they'll probably hang on to this type of headset as long as businesses are swallowing these things up in large numbers, right? The day that, that businesses say, nope, we no longer want laser-based, external trackers we no longer want these types of controllers um they will they'll continue to sell it and you know it's let's be real it's still a pretty killer friggin' headset you know it's the controllers that are really really a, a bummer dude i it's a bummer i'm gonna end up buying pimax controllers yeah the sword <laughs> controllers you. yeah i'm yeah, gonna I end up you. buying them dude i, I feel know you. It. <laughs> it's like i don't know why yeah. i don't i mean i, I don't know whatever fucking <laughs> and, and what you said, like the the consumers of like the the the, um, the the business market, like it's predominantly is it's China, because yeah. like the, every time we go there, if we go to the arcades, it's it's all it's most ninety percent is five pro or five yeah. fives or five pros, most time five pro, and that's like the level that gets stuck. So like we have the Rift, the HP, we have so much more, and they got stuck there. So like for that market, that this that market will consume this headset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they will, and they, that's a huge. They want to upgrade their, the consumers, yeah. the customers want to upgrade, so they they need this, and that's why they build this because it's easy. Because like they don't, the Chinese don't have another choice to mm -hmm. get other headsets in. Exactly. So yeah, Oculus is like, But that's the interesting <laughs> part because we look at H HTC from our Western perspective, right. but they look. At, so it's such a like mixed world. Every time we talk about HTC, it's such a. Yeah, it's an interesting company because they have so much market share there. They have like five port. They, they have everything. Every okay, you step in, there's five. And if you go uh, in the Western market, oh, it's mixed. You know, you see Oculus, you see HP, you see a yeah. Valve Index, you see them all. And yeah. there, it's just it's just like predominantly it's HTC. It's so, yeah. it's they so have interesting, such a dude. Because I feel like the VR industry is like split between Asia and everyone else. You know, like we often like, like we, like we have you on the show right now. Like you're sitting in the Netherlands, right? And like you say our Western perspective, but you're on the other side of the planet from me, right? And you know, and uh, from us. And uh, you know, we talk to people from all over the world all the time, but I feel like the Asian market is almost just this like different universe or something. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, because they sit behind the great wall, the great firewall of China, right? And HTC has to play a very delicate game with their government in order to be allowed to have this technology. Oculus cannot, cannot be there yeah. because they don't comply with, with what they have to do to, to be in that market. Oh, China, also Singapore though, right? Korea, mm -hmm. sure. Japan. I mean, Germany, like there's, there's so many places where you cannot buy you can't yeah. buy an Oculus headset because, you know, and uh, man, it, it's just such a weird thing. And that's why Pico is not really interested right now in getting into our market. They want to build in, in, in the, you know, the Asian market. They want to, as they're, you know, getting more and more developers on, eventually they'll be able to launch here and, and have a, a decent impact on the market. Right. But right now they're allowed in China, which Oculus is not. Therefore they have a huge big business advantage. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Pico because like yeah. they really have this long term perspective on the market. As like I as with a company in healthcare, we we invested in the Oculus Go, and we got screwed. We got yeah. screwed fucking hard by by uh, by Oculus. So, but ouch. And because like there's so many care facilities here in this in this country, I know who have the Oculus Go, and like because the support is gonna end, and like it's it's one big mess. Yeah. And some some care care facilities just bought it, so after years of like you know putting money together, and then finally could they could buy ten or fifteen headsets, and now they have them, and now and then some people are bumped, and you have to tell them like it's worthless. Yeah, and that's. Like, such a shame like i uh, like yeah I, I think that they dropped the ball on that and of course like yeah if you look at the the, the gaming market of course you want to have the quest and of course but like they they offer this business to business uh, and they offered it they had this program and even though you were in the program it's like and pico just says like they have this long-term perspective and they're really open and the, the headsets like 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm a really big fan of Pico because, yeah. I, of course, they probably also want to collect data because they, they all want to collect data. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Facebook is really on the data, and that's it's not a gaming company. They never originated from gaming. It's also not their main priority and focus. So yeah, just like just dropping the ball on like B2B and healthcare and so many other industries that still need to catch up with VR. And then if you yeah, just throw a quest in and then after two years at all, oh, dropping the support like Yeah. For me, for me as a company, it's hard to build on. It's yeah. so hard to trust a company like that. And Pico is really well willing and open and uh, having this long term perspective because like yeah, like if an elder care facility or a care facility, or whatever, buys a headset, it's for a longer run if you that's like for a few like a few decent years. Especially if you buy it in, in, in scale in bulk. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. yeah, I'm very interested in what Pico will go and what they're gonna do and uh, yeah, I think they have a lot of uh, I think they they can get a also big market share in the in the West. Yeah, was that a plane, dude? Holy what cow. the past two episodes? Yeah, last wow, episode that's, two, that's I felt pe- like we were under attack. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. All right, plane just flew overhead dude. here. But I am looking forward very much to Pico Me entering too. our market one of these days. Me too. I had, yeah. I mean, I've said this a handful of times now, but I had my mind fucking blown by the glasses. Do you ever try those glasses, David? Mm-hmm. The, 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 Pico flat, the flat three off ones, dude. The, it blew my mind. The one where you just put a phone in your pocket, it's plugged into yeah. your phone, and it's like yeah. so lightweight, yeah. really good visuals. Like I, it gave me a glimpse into what VR will be like yeah. in uh, in the future. They, they just have to come to a point where those can be tracked. Uh, you know, yeah. can't, three off is kind of dead. You know, and and I'm glad to see it go. To be honest with you, but those glasses are super sick, and eventually you'll be able to. Just like we saw those Hawaii glasses, which were just about the same. But they had the no low attachment that would clip right on the top and make it a six off headset. You know, so, since we're on the topic, it kind yeah. of almost seems, David, like that you are on the side of the fence that says that three DOF would be is acceptable if it's scalable and it's getting people into VR. Would you say that that's true? You put me in a corner, but yeah, that's, 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 true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I think, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it is true. It just depends. Like, what do you want to achieve with VR? Right. That's it's just like what what market are you in and what do you want to achieve? And you don't need the most advanced headsets some to achieve a certain goal. Um yeah, I think there's still market for those kinds of headsets. I, I but on the other hand I hope that that three because the only issue with the three dots is that a lot of people get motion sickness. Mm-hmm. So that's something we're dealing with. Like there's still quite a big mature big part of the people who get some motion sickness and with with the trade-off, you can't really solve that unless like the content will be more like there's now some 360 you can move in and like there's like some some innovations going in a 360 uh, mm-hmm. uh, f- uh, world. So there's like some interesting stuff coming. But yeah, the only issue the three dove is like the the, the motion sickness. Yeah. And also uh, three doves can they, they, I think like you can in the future you can make this trade-off as you can like really scale and in bulk make those things. And then it's going to be interesting to bring it to the mass market, to the to the to the business market, to uh, have like certain uh, things in there. But yeah, like because a lot of people don't understand controllers. So and, uh, also one of the biggest issues is that people don't understand controllers. So or like I saw some uh, or uh, experiences or games in 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 healthcare and other markets, and they just code out the the buttons. Mm-hmm. And then you already like it's already easier, but people don't understand controllers. That that's an that's a big. We as gamers understand controllers because we grew yeah. up with it. Um, but people who never touch the VR headset or touch for the second or the third or the fifth time, uh, just for their work because it's part of the training or it's part of an exercise or whatever. So they they don't understand the controllers. So like it's still this in between because the hand tracking is still it's great, but it's not good enough. Yeah. Uh, for uh, for really like using it. So. I, I have this feeling we're stuck in between the three DOF uh, and and the the, the six DOF headset with proper hand tracking because I think then you can make a step from the three DOF to six DOF with the hand tracking because hand tracking people understand what their hands are and people also understand if you have to push a, a button or like so then I think that, that this is gap the controllers are the gap for for me as like the uh, for for mass market and scaling VR so I, I have this feeling we're in between. Um, mm-hmm. That's yeah, that makes sense, man. I, I I feel you on that. I feel like for uh, for for that kind of market, especially when you're not dealing with gamers, uh, hand tracking is huge, and Facebook knows that. Obviously, they they implemented hand tracking into their headset. They also acquired a company um, where you put a wristband on, and you know it, it kind of intercepts 
signals to your hands. So they they have they have very much the same mentality that uh, that controllerless VR uh, is going to be big in a certain market. You know, and I think it absolutely will be. All all that needs to be figured out at this point is um, reliable haptic solution for hand tracking. Because yeah. when there's no interaction, like no haptic interaction with the virtual world, it, it feels you you don't truly feel connected. It's when you reach out and you like feel that button go. It's in Beat Saber when you slice through that thing, you like feel that connection in your hand. Like yeah. that's really an essential part of of interacting in VR. Um, so I'm excited to see whatever kind of haptic solutions come up. It's interesting though. If you if you you probably try the whole lens too and the demos on there, it's interesting that I have more that connection with the hand tracking of the whole lens too. So the AR one that I have that then the, with the fear, what you said in VR, like you need. Yeah, it's interesting. Like why does an mm-hmm. AR like I feel really like playing this piano even though I don't have feedback. Hmm. It feels yeah. more than. You know, yeah, I, I feel know. like AR um, is almost like the like the beginning of like what we imagine holograms to be like. You know, like we grew up watching mm-hmm. Star Wars and you see Obi Wan Kenobi. Spoilers, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you see Obi Wan Kenobi in, in the in the hologram, you know, and then like you like they like put his, your hands through them, you know, and like it's yeah. all it's all light. Like I feel like we're kind of almost used to that idea a little bit of those like floating displays that you can just put your hand through, you know, yeah. like so to see something floating is like a as a like a transparent texture in front of us it's almost like you would expect your hand to go through it you know so maybe we have like some kind of like cultural um like cultural uh like uh, what's the word i'm looking for like something that you uh can recognize like cultural recognition Mm -hmm. with ar that allows us to maybe like make that disconnect a little bit because i feel you as soon as you started saying that david i was like you know what He's right because in VR, it's like it's almost like makes me nauseous. I'm like, oh, I don't feel anything. Oh, this is weird, you know. But in AR, you could like, like move yeah. things around. Yeah, so that's an interesting distinction. I think it's because you're still in the room. You're like still in the room that you're in, looking around through, mm-hmm. you know, through an AR lens. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and also the also the hand tracking of the whole lens was on point. It is. It is. It's pretty freaking good, man. <laughs> So if the hand tracking would be better on the on the quest or then then maybe it also would feel different but yeah like i don't know yeah this is an interesting uh maybe yeah should like when your hands it. disappear because of occlusion of the cameras i mean that is the ultimate in uh in immersion breaking right and especially if you're moving your hands and you know where your hands are but they're not represented in uh in in your view the correct way it's just kind of breaks things right because we are so familiar with our hands they're the tools we use for everything yo so scott blanchard just jumped in here and said guys the vive pro 2 displays are 1246 by or i'm sorry are 2446 by 2446 each the g2 displays oh yeah they are higher 2140 by 2140 so if the vive pro 2 actually does have a higher resolution than the g2 yeah and i've heard a lot of people say that the g2 is like mind-blowingly clear yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, hey, Vive, if you're listening, uh, I don't know. I promise not to complain about the controllers. If, <laughs> if you send, Bullshit. Send me a Vive. We're going to complain about the controllers. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. But still, send me a Vive Pro 2. That'd be fun. <laughs> I don't want to buy it, but I want it. Yeah, you know, and, and what do you think about the price on that? What do you think about $750 just for the headset, no base stations, no controllers, when you can get an index for... $500. Now, obviously the resolution on the index is way lower, right? Um, but the field of view is higher. It's smoother. It's made by, you know, it's made by a company that maybe, you know, people want to deal with a little bit more than HTC, right? Um, not that the index has the best, uh, not that it's not breaking a lot, right? They they have some quality issues, but uh, so does HTC, right? And and people know Steam, people know um, people know Valve, right? I don't know, man. I feel like this is a it's a weird price point. It's it's all it's all a little confusing. I mean, I really want to try this headset though. I really, really, really want to try it's it. It's newer. It's newer. It has higher resolution. It's fresher. It makes sense to me that it's more expensive. You know, like 
why but what about like the we all know the microphone you know on mike does suck. you know on vive products isn't isn't always the best we know the headphones aren't always the best you have the you know you have with the index especially you have those amazing off-ear speakers directional speakers that blast directly into your ears this you, may be an unpopular opinion i actually like the vive pro 2 audio solution more than the index audio solution it's more immersive to me like the index is so far off my ear that like I can hear everything that's happening in the room around me and the Vive Pro ones cup on top of my ears enough to where sure. it like locks me in. Well, so, so, you know, if you're in an environment where there's kids around, there's people talking, things are happening, that that's one thing. If, if you're like me, you don't have anything going on except for the VR you're playing. Right. I mean, there is, it is the most amazing audio solution uh, I've ever tried. I mean, I would buy that headset just for this, the headphones wow yeah so, like i said i knew that I yeah. knew you weren't gonna like that yeah <laughs> and so how people. i feel <laughs> some people <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, but uh, so so but do, do you just think that um that maybe valve will drop another exclusive for the valve index you think it's it's not gonna happen anymore because that, that also makes a difference because you said like yeah maybe people want to be a show to a certain brand but like if they drop another one exclusive yeah, you know, I don't I don't think Half-Life is going to stay exclusive. I think it's going to hit the PSVR 2. I mean, just a guess, but I cannot imagine that it's not going to launch with with the PSVR 2. Uh I don't know about about the content that Valve keeps keeps promising, right? They 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 told us 2 years ago that wireless was a done deal. They figured it out. It's coming, right? We still don't have a wireless adapter for the Index. Um, you know, they told us three games were in development. All we've heard about was Half-Life, and then they ended up coming back and going, well, you know, that's not exactly true. You know, we have Half-Life and the other ones, eh, you know. So I don't know. You know, Valve does whatever the Valve wants to do. You know, it's Valve time, baby. They yeah. just do what they want to do. So it's it's an interesting situation. Well, and I mean, you talk about exclusives, but like... Standalone in the future. Standalone with, with the titles they promised. Mm. Yeah, I mean Google, Google in the mix with also their headset. Yeah, if Valve came out with a standalone headset and they're like, "Hey, guess what? Here's a Half Life title. Here's a Left 4 Dead title. Here's yeah. Team Fortress 3." Like, and the so entire much. universe would go and buy it. Yeah, Hopkins. <laughs> Everybody would buy that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so too. But you know, it's not exactly what's happening. I think the next big thing for Valve. I mean, you know, if you listen to Gabe Newell talk for any longer than 10 seconds you know you're probably going to see that bci brain computer interfacing is probably <laughs> excuse me the next thing that that they're going to try to implement and and i kind of hope they do uh it's scary at the same time right because if if they implement it you know facebook's not too far behind and then once they know what you're thinking game over right but <laughs> it's already game over bro yeah <laughs> true I'm so fucked <laughs> I'm looking more I'm looking more forward to the brain computer interfacing part of this whole evolution of VR um than mm -hmm. I think I am any other part of it. Oh yeah, what do you think about BCI, David? Um no, so, so I tried the, the the next mind. Um that was very interesting. So it's yeah. kind of like going that way. Um Yeah, I think it's interesting like to use that technology to like especially like with therapy and stuff, like healthcare wise, it will, it will be very interesting to have those kinds of technologies integrated in the VR environments to really help people. Um, but yeah, for gaming also, like it can unlock a lot of potential. I'm really curious, like how these headsets are gonna look in the future, or like how how they will look like with these kinds of technologies. It's and... like a long hook that you insert into your ear all the way into your brain. <laughs> God. <laughs> Well, um, you know, you look at Neuralink and obviously for their for their results that they get, um, you know, they have to stick electrodes directly down into your brain. But it's not far off into the future that we will be able to do that stuff wireless. And that's what Valve's looking at. Uh, you're, you know, if you measure brain waves, they're very strong outside of your head. You do not necessarily need to go into the brain for a lot of this stuff. We have some of the we have some of the early stuff right like uh like the solution you just mentioned david and we also uh what was the name of that company that sent us a brain computer interfacing thing we interviewed them at uh, vrx 
Um, but anyway, they they also have a solution, but it's, you know, this it's very- Lucid it's labs. Very loose, yes, lucid labs. It's all very mm. basic. It's all like, are you concentrating or are you not type of thing? You know, I think what what we're really looking at getting into here is is being able to tell, you know, what it is you want to do. Are you bored? Do you need more excitement? Do you want to, you know, move that object over there to over there with just your mind? You know, the, some of these things are way, way more advanced. Uh, will we'll be coming down in the, in the future, and that's when it's going to be really, really exciting. There's I think really, Valve's going to uh, be a big part of it. There's a really cool BCI um, Black Mirror episode where they put the guy oh, into yeah. uh, like a house and like his thoughts are invading him and stuff. And yeah. I mean, obviously Black Mirror is really fun because it shows like the potential maybe of some of these technologies, but it always shows it in like the worst yeah. possible scenario. Yeah. So it like it does a good job of scaring everybody with these things too. But um, yeah, the BCI stuff, I mean, I personally, I, I really hope it, it happens and I hope we get to do it because I love the idea of something knowing how I feel. And like like a, like a programmer and experience knowing how I feel and catering it accordingly, right? Like, like if you're in a horror game, dude, it could destroy you. Like, oh could, yeah, it could ruin you. Like, it would terrifying. know what 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 is triggering you and how yeah. much of it to give you and when to pull back and when not to and when yeah. to jump scare you and when not to. Like procedurally yeah. generated content with combined with BCI, um, I think could be that could be some amazing amazing stuff, dude. I I really hope we get to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it, you know, will be absolutely amazing in healthcare, you know, as well. Like, like we were talking about, you know, not having to explain uh, to the patient, uh, you know, push this button or move your hand over here, you know, just, just think <laughs> mm -hmm. that'll be pretty big. Being able to know the pain level instead of going, what's your pain level from one to 10, right? right? Being like, just it measure knows. it, just it measure knows. it real quick. You know? So I don't know that. I think that's the future. That future is probably 20 years out. Um, you know, if you, if you listen to anything, Gabe Newell says, it looks like it's just around the corner, but uh, you know, right. so is wireless for the index. So. Do, you, do, you, <laughs> do you look at this stuff um, a little more optimistically or uh, a little bit more ominously, David? when you think about these kinds of things that's a double like i i, I always miss the and that's why if you go back to black mirror like the the thing for me black mirror of course like yeah maybe they want to scare people because they show it in the baddest way but i think they also get like discussions out out of people like the ethical discussions like i uh, like lately i've been more like reading and thinking about like ethical discussions about like these kinds of technologies like i'm i'm a strong believer in technology tech for good so like i believe ever any technology can be used for good uh, but of course there are always people out there who <laughs> have different intentions mm -hmm. um, so yeah now i believe this technology will be like really beneficial like for for, for everybody in, in different uh, sectors but and the, the the ethical part, like well, what do we think of people like who then lay, like later will have an advantage if you have this headset with this interface and you can use that in, of course, like gaming is fun and maybe for health it's treatment, but like there also will be other solutions. And what do we think if somebody has an advantage, what, what do we feel like somebody has an advantage over us? while using this technology we're using the neural link or just so what, dude they'll, how they'll have to adapt person function in our society if that's your neighbor or that's your colleague or your your uh com competitor in in the business so that's going to be very interesting I or imagine. in gaming like if you have like the newer software or you have to play online against each other what is what what will these technologies do for uh those kinds of uh topics I, I imagine how like i when you're talking about that i immediately was drawing parallels to like the birth of the internet right like when the birth of the, when the internet first came out not everybody had it right but because it was in its infancy and because all these people weren't contributing to it, it actually wasn't that powerful of a tool until everyone kind of got up and running with it. So I can kind of see it kind of working like the internet, right? Where like a handful of people start to get it. You go over to your friend's house and they're doing it over there and you're like, what the fuck is this? And then like 10, 15 years later, most people are like getting on board and like, you know, maybe there are some like small areas where they still don't have access to these things, you know, but like first it just shows up in people's libraries, you know, I'm like, okay, we have internet access in our town, you know, it's at the library, you can get to it, you know? So um, we've acclimated the internet into our society insanely fast if you think about it oh, like yeah. within Big our time. lifetimes i was born with we were all born with no internet and now it is the whole world it's like yeah. it's like evidence of yeah. fucking collective consciousness right there in the palm of your hand you know and we acclimated to that 
fast. The whole, the whole world is connected at this point. Maybe there's some indigenous tribes that <laughs> don't have laptops, but most people because do. For thousands of years, our life was just, our life was outside. And now our life is online. Our it's... life is in the internet. And before it was out. And that's only yeah. like in, what is it, like 30 years? Yeah, well, you, you, back in the day, you, you were only... <laughs> You are only influenced back in the day by the people in your immediate circle. You, oh. If you wanted information or you wanted to think outside the box, you had to go and research and you had to find a place with documentation and you had to flip through books and you didn't, there was no search function, right? You didn't have, you couldn't get people's opinions at the speed of light. Um, now that's very, very different. Um, and, you know, when you look at things like, will you know uh, when when a new console generation comes out no one really says well what about the last ones we just move on new technology is here it's better um those things the older technologies will be phased out so i think when things like brain computer interfacing first start to make a an appearance or even even like vr right now you get a lot of people that are like now i want my xbox you know what I mean? And they, they just don't get it and they don't get it until they try it. And they, sometimes they just don't get it at all. Mm -hmm. But those are the people that will eventually be left behind because they're not willing yeah. to really adapt and to, um, and to grow with the rest of society. Right. Well, I guess we'll see because, you know, like when it comes to the world and everything that we do, it all kind of boils down to expression for me. And like, as technology grows, like when, when we were playing NES games, when the Super Nintendo came out, everybody just assumed that that would be the last time you ever fucking played an NES. <laughs> you know, they're like, okay, that's gone. Like yeah. I have a new one, way better graphics, four buttons instead of two. Oh my God, who the fuck would play that stupid old piece of shit? But <laughs> after some time goes by, you realize that the expression actually yeah. is still there. Like you still get to feel that when you connect with these older technologies right so i for one actually think that retro vr will have a scene one day oh sure and, like people will be playing beat saber 50 years now yeah. be like holy crap this is so cool gen one vr and i almost imagine people who prioritize like hiking connecting with nature getting out of your house going on on adventures and stuff like that right selling your traveling. fucking house and traveling the, yeah. the world like those are people who are still connecting to the expression of the analog world, right? Like yeah. they're like, Hey, look here, this is still a real thing. So I don't necessarily think that it's mutually exclusive to where like when we gain uh, advancement, we're like pfft, ditching everything, right? It's almost like we're like bringing more and more and more into the fold, more mm -hmm. opportunities for expression, more opportunities for connection, more opportunities to live and be amazing and love life. Hmm. But then, but then we go back to ready player one. Huh? So who, who controls the Oasis? So, and that that's the big question Iowan, who's Facebook. gonna own the oasis because like that's gonna what, what you just said self-expression and all these great things we have all these liberties and freedoms we have mm -hmm. but who owns the oasis who says like oh these are kinds of expressions mm, not not it's, it can be uh, uh, uploaded here or can be done here mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing that with, you know, Horizon by Facebook isn't even out yet, but everyone that goes in there has this eerie feeling, right? When you're in there, you know, you're being recorded, you know, someone is probably listening to you, right? It's a weird thing where you have Big Brother peering right over your shoulder. Uh, it's very, very strange. So it, it, there is a huge, I think, I think efficacy in VR, is that even, did I even say that right? Efficacy? But either way, you know what I mean? Um, I think that's probably it should be focused on in a, in a big, big way. You know, we have some, we have some places out there that are trying to do good and, and to tackle this stuff as it comes up. Like, look at, look at Kemp Bai. He's always trying to, to raise awareness for this type of thing. Right. But right now people don't care. We're not at that point yet. We're not at the point when people have been hurt or screwed in a major, right. major way. And with VR and especially with brain computer interfacing, will we even get that second chance? Will we get the chance later on to go, whoa, wait a second, you know, is it too late? Our brains have been invaded at that point, right? So I think we gotta like, we gotta focus on that stuff now. That stuff is so friggin' important. And if there's one thing I think maybe that I could pick for a career, maybe that's it, right? Like to be part of that whole That's thing. That's a great idea. Yeah. I think, I think uh, your opportunity will be there if, if when, when, when push comes to shove, because good people are hard to come by in every single fucking facet of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're good people, someone out there needs you, right? So don't think that they have enough. If you're good people, go out there and get it and be a part of it. Uh, David, why don't you wrap this up for us? Give us some closing thoughts. 
Um, so, <laughs> I, th I think it's great to uh, great that I've been on the show, and I think it's also full circle. So it's interesting to add like uh, that everything comes together or something because like what I said before. So it's like what what Nate said in the beginning, uh, like all the way in the beginning that with, with uh, the the things he uh, he told you guys. That's interesting. It's full circle because like. He says like he like uh, owes like a part of his career to to me, but it's also the other way around because like he because of him starting in the VR industry, it's also full circle. So for me, like doing the stuff in healthcare, start my company, or now trying to to build up, and it's it's a different pace than we are in the gaming industry. But like slowly, like I can see the future. I can see the future ahead of where we're going, and I'm trying to take like the the healthcare industry in the Netherlands first, take take them with me, and hopefully the rest of Europe and who knows the rest of the world, like just like, what's the entry level? Uh, and how can you start with somebody to, to, to play VR? And I think we all like realize that and notes that like, you have maybe your dad or brother or neighbor or somebody who didn't experience VR or experience VR. So how, what, what's their entry level? What, what would interest them for the long run in hopping into VR? And VR at this moment, it, it's maybe not for everybody at this moment. And I think this is also something we need to accept um, but like slowly we'll get there. It will get bigger. It's like with AR already on our phones and all these big tech companies already building AR, VR slash headset. And then of course in the future we'll make a baby and we have a uh, somebody will up, <laughs> come up with an XR or <laughs> a name <laughs> that confuses the market even more. But yeah, there will be headsets that will like do both in one and where you can have leisure, where you can have gaming, but where you can also have education, where you can go to school, where you can can have like new things for you for your job or learn new things, express yourself. So yeah, I, I see a very bright future where everybody can uh, explore and be themselves and express uh, and there will be no boundaries anymore. And that excites me the most that it will be a future in time. We will all have headsets and you can communicate with anybody around the world, even though we don't speak the same language because the brain interface, because of all the technologies that you can just like, we can all be one and find each other. And in all of our differences, we're all people and we're all the same. And I think we should be a bit nice to each other and be less polarized and it's going on in every country. and every uh, society so i think uh, that that's what i want to wrap it up that you just for uh, good. and uh, i think we have a very bright future ahead but like keep also this ethical discussion you had like what do we think of these technologies and what how will it interfere in the lives of of, of children the, the the new generations growing up uh, but also for the older generations for all uh, generations Dude, so, yeah, that's unity it. you Dude. heard it here first fucking a you just earned <laughs> yourself an invite back to this show anytime you like sir because that is really what between realities is all about we are scratching at the surface of something truly fucking profound here people and it's not we don't really express this often enough but this is truly profound and we don't know exactly how it's going to manifest itself to david's point here but something's coming i think it's going to be beautiful and um you know, David, you and your bro are fucking inspiring dudes. Like, thank you guys for being amazing. Thank you for the vibes that you put into the, into the community and all the hard work. And um, I'm, like I said, uh, before we yeah. got started, we're just stoked to have you guys on our team. You know, Team VR, Heck we're all yeah. in this together. So We wish your company well, and uh, I, I hope that you are able to infiltrate the healthcare uh, system as much as possible and bring some of this amazing tech um, mm -hmm. to people. And, you know, the elderly thing, all of it, man, I think it's all amazing and wonderful. So links in the description below, yep. follow David on Twitter, check out his company's website. He and his colleague are there in suits looking awesome being co-founders of this thing. And it's absolutely amazing. David, thank you so much for joining us today, dude. And uh, we'll talk to you very soon. Yes, thank you everything for everything. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Thanks, Say David. goodbye to David. And just like that, he is gone. He's been ejected from between reality spaceship. And <laughs> wow, this was a lot of fun. This was, man. Dude, so many this is what I love about this show is we bring in all these great people that have such great and amazing perspectives to to kind of round out this whole vr industry right and to kind of kind of show us what it's what it's all about all the different possibilities all the good all the bad um it's just it's just great man i love it it truly is delirium drew obscure nerd morp central you guys sliding in here before we close it up sampler mateo 311 what's up dude aspen Darkfire, 
obscure nerd uh rendered reality sean in the house like all you guys mr trinidad um you guys are the who best. say next thank you guys all so very much for being here i wish i could just like i don't know like i wish i could have every single one of you on the show simultaneously and i guess that's kind of what's happening with you guys in the chat so thank you so much yes. for being here uh jansen uh Brittany perulis my love my wife that's not your last name anymore girl what the fuck are you doing <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, what's happening next week? <laughs> next week, we have the one and only Grumpy Duck VR. No. So next week, we might probably be a little bit lighter of a show, more more laughing and, and just general chaos. You yeah. Know what I mean? Grumpy Duck is a goofy bastard. Yes, he is. He slid into the chat earlier, made sure he made himself known and then dipped out. <laughs> I want to give him some shit for that next week. So be here for it, everyone. Thank you Absolutely. so much for joining us, and we will see you very soon. See you later. Bye-bye.